So we wrote last day, pause here, because we paused here. The idea we're getting at then is momentum is conserved. Next example, we have an 18 kilogram curling stone that's traveling due east. You know what, since they gave me a compass direction, I think, Tara, I should go north, east, south, west, somewhere on my question, because I get east and west mixed up all the time, you'd be amazed. It's traveling due east at 26 meters per second, it strikes an identical stationary, that's an important word, stationary curling stone. After the collision, the first stone is moving east at 0.65 meters per second. What's the final velocity, magnitude, and direction of the second sail? Hmm. Is there a collision? This is a job for momentum. And so we said, Jake, the first thing that I haven't done that for a while, Perry, the first thing that I like to do is I like to go the sum of all the initial momentum equals the sum of all the final momentum. Really, what I'm writing there is I'm saying, hey, this is a job for momentum. I've written something down. I feel better. It's no longer blank. And then I approach it systematically. Connor, my friend, I say to myself, self, before the collision, what was moving? Mass one, mass two, or both? Mass one? Momentum of mass one initial. Wham! They collide. After the collision, what's moving? Mass one, mass two, or both? And this, you've got to read carefully. Mass one, mass two, or both? Both stuck together or separate? separate? Separate. So it's going to be momentum of mass one final plus momentum of mass two final. Is that okay? Yeah. Right? It definitely tells us the first one is moving and it asks how fast the second one is moving. So, yeah. That's why I said you got to read carefully. It implies, oh, if it wasn't, I assume the answer to the final velocity isn't zero because that would be kind of boring. In fact, I think what we're having is this. If you look up, stationary rock, rock coming in, bang. That's what I'm guessing. The first rock continues moving on slower. The second rock, rock takes off. I've seen that happen in curling before. Uh, let's see, momentum, uh, Cal, momentum is what times what? So this is going to be mass one, velocity one initial. Momentum one final is going to be mass one, velocity one final. Momentum two final is going to be mass two, velocity two final. And I think what they want us to find is uh, that right there. I think we can get that by itself. I think first I'll move that over. How? Subtract, and then I'll take care of that. How? Divide. Matt, I think if I hear you correctly, and I think I do, you're saying that the final velocity of object two is going to be M1V1 initial plus M plus Mr. Duick, not plus, minus Mr. Duick, minus Mr. Duick, minus M1V1 final, all divided by M2. It's going to be 18 V1. 2.6 minus 18 V2, uh, 0.65, positive or negative 0.65, and how do I know? East, does say east, and did I let east be positive already? So it's going to stay positive. All over mass 2. By the way, the fact that all the masses are identical in this question, if I'd really been paying attention, 
I probably, instead of writing mass one, mass one, and mass two, could have just said M, 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 and I think the masses would have canceled, which is kind of a boring question. So Sam, you're going to find often I'll make sure the masses are different. In other words, if you look at the next question, I think it's also curling, but for some dumb reason, the curling rocks have different masses, which would never happen in a real curling match, but humor me to make the math more interesting, okay? Uh, brackets around the top, I think, because there's two terms, two groups of numbers up there. 18 times 2.6 minus 18 times 0.65, close bracket, divided by 18. 1.95? Woo! Look at that. Come on, that was to two decimal places. That was pretty good. No, I did it. I actually factored out the 18s, canceled out the 18s, and realized if the 18s cancels, it's really just 2.6 minus 0.65, which I can do in my head. Wasn't as impressive as it looked. That's the magnitude. But it said it wants the final velocity. What did I write in brackets? Magnitude and direction. Which direction? East. What if it would have been a negative answer? West. But it wasn't. East. Example two. Next example. Another curling stone, 22 kilograms, traveling due east. Okay, north, east, south, west. Ooh, it strikes a 16 kilogram curling stone that's moving west. Ah. After the collision, the second stone moves off due east. What's the final velocity, magnitude, and direction of the first stone? Is there a collision? This is a job for momentum. If I add up the sum, of all the initial momentum before the collision has to equal the sum of all the final momentum after the collision. Before the collision, what's moving? Mass one, mass two, or both? Both? So I'm going to have momentum one initial plus momentum two initial. Wham, they collide. Bam, they collide. Is that better? AJ, after the collision, what's moving? Mass one, mass two, or both? Uh, both. both. Stuck together or separate? Momentum one final plus momentum two final. Momentum is, uh, oh yeah, mass times velocity. So momentum one initial is going to be mass one V one initial plus mass two V two before the collision initial. After, it's going to be mass 1 v 1 final plus mass 2 v 2 final. What are they asking me to find here? Oh, twist. That guy. Um, I think minus that over and then divide by M1. Yeah? Yeah? You sure? You with me? Yeah? Okay. You look like you're kind of, okay, we're good. Tara's awake. So, uh, Tara, I think, I think, I think it's going to be, here, Pen. The final velocity of object one is going to be m1 v1 initial yoink plus m2 v2 initial yoink minus m2 v2 final yoink all divided by mass one. That's kind of ugly, but not too hideous. I can I can type this. Uh, 
Uh, oh, I've scrolled down. M1 was 22. V1, 3.2 plus 16. Oh, negative 1.6. Good catch. It says West. Uh, minus the second stone, 16. East, 2.4. Yoink. Divided by... So what I'm imagining right now, McKenna, is this. And I'm not sure if it's going to be boing and they both bounce apart, in which case I might get a negative velocity for my final for object one. Or it might be boing. It could have had enough to actually reverse the other one and keep it going. I don't, what do you get? Do you get a negative answer or a positive answer? Michael's looking like he has it. Very small. Oh, does this almost completely cancel? Does it almost do that? Let's see. I, I made these numbers up, and it's entirely possible. 22 times 3.2 plus 16 times negative 1.6. Thank you, sir. Minus 16 times 2.4. I'll double check my numbers for typos, which I was going to do anyways. It uh, looks good. Divided by 22. You get that? That's not that small. I thought it was like you were saying like 0 0.003 or something. 0.29. V1 final equals 0.29 meters per second. Direction. East. Final answer. Next page. A 45 kilogram boy and a 60 kilogram girl are standing in the middle of a frozen pond. Ah, no friction, or at least We'll pretend there's absolutely no friction because ice is pretty close. The boy gives the girl a push as shown. I hate you! They're breaking up. And she moves off with a speed of 2.4 meters per second. A. With what velocity does the boy move off with? This is an explosion. It's a slow explosion, Elijah, don't get me wrong. But what I mean by an explosion is where you have that, things moving away from each other that were initially in contact with each other. This is a job for momentum. The sum of all the momentum before the explosion equals the sum of all the momentum after the explosion. What's the momentum before the explosion? Elijah, zero. Which means the momentum after the explosion is zero, except since they're both moving, I want to try and take that into account. After the explosion, what's moving? Both, stuck together or separate? Separate, I'm gonna have momentum. How about we go momentum girl plus momentum boy. Instead of going mass one and mass two, how about girl and boy? That's easier to keep track of. In fact, Sam, I'm pretty sure I can say this. The momentum of the boy is negative momentum of the girl. Since they add to zero, they must be opposites. Okay. Uh, Mass boy v boy equals negative mass girl v girl. I think the velocity of the boy is going to be negative 
mass girl v girl divided by mass boy. It's going to be negative 60 times 2.4. Mr. Duick, shouldn't you put a negative 2.4 in for the velocity? I think I took care of the negative by recognizing that they added to 0. When I wrote that, the negative introduces itself. Uh, la, 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 la. Well, no. Do we want to let to the left be negative or to the left be or to the right be negative? What do you guys like? You like left negative? So let's call this a negative velocity because that means the boy is moving in my diagram to the right, which I want to be what? Positive, and that'll give me a minus. See the minus minus appearing in it? Isn't that cool? Uh, 45. By the way, if their masses were identical, what could you say about their velocities? It'd be the same. Uh, what if the girl was exactly twice as heavy as the boy? She'd be going half the speed, he'd be going twice the speed. Yeah, it's a nice little linear relationship. Here, uh, 60 divided by 45, that's 3 divided by 2, so that's going to be uh, 2.4 times uh, 7.2, uh, 3.6? Someone to double check? 3.2? Really? Wow. OK. Oh, yeah, it's 4 over 3. Uh, yes, that's right. 3.2 meters per second to the right. OK. Any of you ever tried this while ice skating, by the way? Push off on your friend and see how far back you guys go? Yeah, you and. Me as well, but I assume some of you are ex hockey or figure or can skate because you're, you know, Canadian. I'm that, on the normal curve, I'm that small group of Canadians that sucks at skating. I can skate, it's the stopping and staying up is the issue. It's like skiing. Oh, I can ski fine. In fact, I'll end up going down the mountain pretty fast, but face first on my stomach, right? But, yeah. B. Dylan, what does B want me to find? What's another word for impulse? Ah, wants me to find Do you see a force and a time mentioned anywhere in this question? Because we got two ways to find impulse. It's force times time. I don't see it. Oh, it's also, well, what's change in anything? Yeah. Final minus initial m V final minus M V initial. Oh, why can't I just do this? Zero. They start out at rest. Okay. Uh, mass of the boy, 45. 3.2. So on your test, I would have no problem, Elijah, now that I've walked through A and B, uh, giving you a situation like this, but not asking you part A, just asking you part B, knowing that you needed to find the final velocity in order to do part B, knowing, knowing that you had to go conservation momentum first, because I don't know the final speed. Hint, hint, hint. I don't know. Probably two or four. I, 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 and AJ, I'm not saying I guarantee we'll ask you B without A, but I am saying I'd have no problem doing it. I, I don't think I'd have to walk you through that. I might. Uh, what is 45 times 3.2? Kilogram meters per second. What's the impulse of the girl? Ah, thank you. You could actually crunch the numbers because you know her mass and you know her velocity from the diagram. But for what it's worth, you could also say, look, her change in momentum must have been negative 144 kilogram meters per second. And you can think of that either as, you know what? She didn't lose momentum. This is in the opposite direction. This isn't like energy where it lost momentum. This is, yeah, she has 144 kilogram meters per second in the opposite direction. Totally. 
And I'm pretty sure if you go 60 times 2.4, that will work out to 144. Oh, but then you have to add the negative to recognize that we said negative was to the left. Oh, D. If the push lasted for 0.25 seconds, what average force did the boy push the girl with? With what average force did the boy push the girl? Hmm. I think now we can use our other definition of impulse, our other equation for impulse. I think we can say, well, you know what? Impulse is also force times change in time. I think the force is going to be the impulse divided by the time. Uh, 144. You know what? Technically, because I'm asking for the force on the girl, I should use her impulse, which was negative over 0.25, you get a negative. That's giving you a direction. It's saying uh, the force that the boy exerted on the girl was to the left, because that's which way the girl moved. 144 divided by 0.25 is going to be 288 times 2 is going to be 400 plus uh, 500, 572, double check, 576, that's what I said, Newtons. You know what? I'm going to go like this. Scribble out the negative, and I'm going to say to the left. I'll add the direction myself. What force did the girl exert on the boy? Why? 576 to the right. Why? Forces come in pairs. Now, it's funny because I've been doing this question for years. I always start out this lesson with the, semi, the big truck hitting the small car, which one exerts the bigger force? And a bunch of my kids say, oh, the big truck exerts the bigger force. But if I started with this question, because the masses are so much more similar, I think people would go to the Newton's third law, forces come in pairs, right away. I think I suck you in by having a really big truck and a really tiny car. In fact, you know what? When you're driving and a bug smashes your windshield, what exerts a bigger force, your windshield on the bug or the bug on your windshield? They're the same. Why does the bug come out so much worse then? It's got such a small mass, it goes through a huge acceleration. Yeah. E. Ooh. Nice little bit of review from last unit. How much what, Matt? Work. work. OK. Well, work is force times distance. Now, I do have a force. I do have a distance. I don't have a distance. Rats. Oh, work is also the area under a force versus distance graph. Do I have a graph here? No. Oh, the work energy theorem. What were you going to say? Yeah? I'm sure you did. Work is change in kinetic plus change in potential. Look at the picture. Do you see a change in height in the picture at all? So Sam, I think I can do this. Yoink. It's really just the change in kinetic. Oh, and what's change in anything? So the work is going to be, oh, and why can I do this? Yeah, I started at rest. You know what? The work is just going to be a half m v final squared. By the way, uh, we haven't gone over the work energy test, but one of the mistakes that drove me crazy, kids would write this, but they wouldn't do that. And others don't. You're the most recent one that I'm. A bunch of you. So beat that out of your system. 
I don't know why. You know, I, I do know why. Madison, they write it, and you guys are all pretty good at writing the right equation. I did it, McKenna. You're pretty good at writing the right equations. And then McKenna, they start typing it into their calculator, and they're so pleased when they get the V final. I got them all in. They let their guard down, and they forget to worry about the squared because they're so proud that they've entered in all the data. Don't do that, or I'll lovingly freak out. Uh, point five. Which mass am I going to use? What did the boy do work on? The girl. I'm going to use the girl's mass because that's he, he, she gave him kinetic energy. He gave her kinetic energy. So the girl's mass, which was 60. Why is the girl way more? It's older. Older sister, younger brother having a fight. Uh, also, because the diagram that I yoinked this from, that's the way it was. I couldn't change that. I could change a lot of other stuff, but I couldn't change that. Uh, uh, what was it? 2.4? Squared. Point, oh. 0.5 times 60 times 2.4 squared. 173 joules of work. 173 joules of work. For what it's worth, the girl did 0.5 times 45 times 3.2 squared. 230 joules of work. Wait a minute, the boy was lighter. Yeah, but she made him go faster. And remember, the velocity is squared. We talked about that's the biggest bang for your buck in terms of adding energy to a system. Let's shoot something. You put it in the appropriate block, thank you. Face down. A 30 gram bullet moving at 250 meters per second strikes a five kilogram wood block at rest and sticks into it. If the bullet and the block move together after the collision on a frictionless surface, A, write a momentum equation, and B, find the speed of the block after impact. It said speed. We're not going to worry too much about direction because I didn't give you a north, south, east, or west, although I did give you a picture. I suspect it's going to be moving to the right. I can't see everything suddenly starting to move left when you shoot something. Is there a collision? There's a job for momentum. Before the collision, what's moving? You know what? I would love to use a B for bullet, but it's also a wood block. B for, so I'll go bullet mass one, block mass two. Before the collision, what's moving? The bullet, the block, or both? Bullet. Momentum one initial. Bam, they collide. After the collision, what's moving? Mass one, mass two, or both? Stuck together or separate? So we'll do our momentum both final. How much room do we have? Oh, lots of room. It's going to be M1 V1 initial equals M1 plus M2 V final. Oh, this one's kind of nice. I think V final is just going to be M1 V1 initial divided by M1 plus M2. M1, bullet, 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 30 grams. Ooh, what's 30 grams? 0 0.3, 0 0.03, 0 0.03, 0 0.03? What did I say V initial was? So hopefully, I made, uh, 250?
5.03. Can I add 5 and 0.03 in my head? Is that okay? That's the mass of both. Uh, by the way, this is also a situation where some kids get sloppy and instead of adding the masses, for some reason they go M1 plus M2, but they hit times on their calculator. Don't do that. No, we're, mass of both means add them up. Uh, final velocity, final speed. Definitely going to be slower. 0 0.03 times 250 divided by 5.03. One point five, one point four nine meters per second to the right. Conservation of momentum. Now, where this gets tough, and it does get tough, is in physics 12, because in physics 12, we start to say, all right, what if you don't hit head on? What if you glance off at an angle, like say you're playing pool and you want to do a bank shot, or curling, you want to just graze something. Then the math and the physics, Johnson, it gets tougher. Probably the single most biggest amount of math you'll do in physics 12 in one question. It takes about seven or eight lines. But head on, not too bad. Just be consistent with your directions. Uh, where are there changes in direction? Uh, if you're bouncing a ball, for example, if you're bouncing a ball, initially the ball is moving down, you could call that negative. Afterwards, it's moving up, you could call that positive. Uh, running into a wall and bouncing off a wall, call one way positive. If you bounce off, the other way negative. Types of collisions. Some terminology. There are three types, actually there are two main types of collisions, Dylan, but the second one is broken up into a very obscure specific one. I think I had it here. Oh no, I didn't include the third obscure one. Good. Physics 12 anyways. The first type is where the objects stick together after the collision. Some car crashes where the wreckage sticks together. Football player tackling and holding on to the ball carrier, they stick together. Uh, a dart hitting the dartboard sticks together. There's a fancy physics word for that. The second type of collision is where the objects bounce off of each other after the collision. For example, curling. Billiard ball, shooting pool. Oh, a baseball and a bat. Most sports where you strike something. That has a fancy physics word. I'm going to give you that one first. The fancy physics word for that one, we call that an elastic collision, and where they stick together, we call that an inelastic collision. And Michael, here's how I keep them straight, because they're very similar sounding words. Whenever I see the word elastic, the first thing that pops into my hand is a rubber band, rubber bounce, bounce apart. Don't stick together, elastic. Inelastic, I just think not elastic, not rubber, not rubber band, not bounce apart. What's the opposite of not bounce apart? Oh, stick together. So there's elastic collisions and there's inelastic collisions. You'll see them in your handouts use some of that terminology. So sometimes, you know how I've always said uh, stuck together or separate and it's fairly obvious. They may just simply say, oh, collides inelastically. And what they're saying is separate without being that blatant or collides, sorry, collides inelastically. What they're saying is stuck together. I did it backwards without being that blatant. Or collides elastically. What they're saying is uh, separate without being that blatant. A couple of videos and I'll turn you loose on the homework.